Oh, BBC News have done another whoopsie. Yes, uh, they posted this thing. They've done an article uh, on the BBC website and it says <laughs> the Israel and Gaza situation. How to spot disinformation on social media. But then the thumbnail, the photo <laughs> is Mariana Spring, who's in charge of BBC Verify. It doesn't really help. You're just making it way too easy for us to make fun of you. You just say, ask a question, how to spot this information, then you put that picture. Well, that's the answer. Mariana Spring and BBC Verify. So the British public, the brave, pro-freedom British public have decided to come out and humiliate BBC News for their messed up tweets. <laughs> Let's have a look at some of them. Well, firstly, the Together Association said, and who better to advise us on this information than the BBC and Mariana? <laughs> Absolutely spot on. Uh, we also had this comment saying, uh, uh, Mark says, well, for starters, it quite often has BBC News in the bottom left corner. Anyone who does disinformation and misinformation and fake news and propaganda. Paul says, well, that's easy. Anything written by Mariana Spring. <laughs> You just make it way too easy, BBC. Come on, guys, be better. Scott said, well, you know she lied on her CV, right? Yeah, I mean, for, for those of you, if you, have, if you haven't seen it, make sure to watch the video on the channel we did uh, a few weeks back uh, about Mariana Spring, the uh, the queen of uh, disinformation units of the BBC. She's literally the disinformation correspondent, which is not really a wise title. That makes us think that she's the correspondent for disinformation. <laughs> Her, her job is BBC Verify to do fact checking, uh, but she also has uh, become a massive entertainment factor on this channel because we end up fact checking the fact checkers on a regular basis. Uh, this one says, that, is this a joke? <laughs> Being told how to spot this information online by a company whose very present existence is to label anything true as this information. Exactly. How, you literally, we talked about this earlier today. Uh, do you remember when we mentioned Andrew Bridgen, uh, when he stood up in the House of Commons yesterday uh, to do the debate about the excess deaths and the BBC Parliament channel, uh, which is supposed to be just covering what happens in BBC, in, in, in Parliament, not really uh, give opinion. It's just there to put a camera in the House of, um, in the House of Parliament just to show. They kept putting the, you know, the fact-checking what Andrew Bridgen was saying throughout his speech. Classic BBC. James says, Your reporting on the hospital in Gaza helped incite attacks against Jews and synagogues across Europe. You are the problem, BBC News. They still haven't apologised. Uh, Ron English says that the BBC Hamas... <laughs> that's a good one. The BBC Hamas are just trolling us at this stage. They know they are untouchable. Well, that's a very good question. That's a, I mean, it's a, a fair point to be made in regards to where the BBC is, where it's going, and now that we're going to have, uh, I mean, highly likely, Keir Starmer as the next Prime Minister, doesn't mean they're going to get a majority, but you know, even a coalition or minority government, all these plans that uh, the Tories had so many years, by the way, to sort out the BBC mess, and then they've been making some promises about 2027, uh, when the license has to be reviewed for the BBC. By that point, thanks to the Tories messing up their own majority, we're probably going to have Keir Starmer as Prime Minister by then, and we're probably going to have BBC license being re renewed once again. So, this is the situation we have. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Who watches the BBC when you have 2C TV? Thank you so much for watching. I'm Maya 2C, and we are the media.